I was fortunate enough to present at Sales Layer's 2021 PIM Experience Summit. We're holding a virtual Q&A where attendees send in their top questions about digital commerce and product experience management. And I'm gonna share my answers. In 2020, I interviewed over 120 online merchants about digital commerce. And this year, I've interviewed 80 online merchants who are using product information management or PIM systems. We also conduct surveys and track market shares and forecasts uh, in the PIM and digital commerce market. That helps me collect data for these answers. The first question we got was around, what are the essential features a product information management system dashboard needs or should include? This question is actually a bit tricky to answer because I think the answer differs quite a bit depending on a user's job title or role. The goal of any systems dashboard is to provide users with the most relevant and actionable information so they can specifically get the, their own job done. Um, if you've added new product information or, or new products to a catalog that need to be enriched, the dashboard, for example, should highlight these actions that need to be taken. Does it need to be enriched, cleansed? Does content need to be added, for instance? It is common for a PIM to show the health of your product information as a whole, saying this number of products need to be uh, completed, fields need to be completed, uh, content needs to be added for these numbers, and show this at a high level in the dashboard. Quality scores for the catalog, that's another layer on top of completeness. Quality scores show whether uh, a product is actually getting worse or better and how fit it is for the market. Users should be able to set up specific filters for the dashboard, such as what percent of my products are ready to publish to an external channel, what percent of my Amazon products are ready for market, that sort of thing. You should also be able to pull in sales data, conversions, sales on your e-commerce system um, as an integration that's key for the dashboards. Whether the user is a category manager, product marketer, brand marketer, or someone in charge of content, the system should present the most urgent tasks that that specific person needs to be completed. So the, the summary answer here is that it depends. It, uh, really the role of a PIM and a PIM dashboard should be supporting all these different features in different reports on the dashboard, and it needs to be configurable. So they need to have a repository of all these different reports, the PIM system should, and uh, it should be configurable. Each user should be able to have their own dashboard based on their specific needs. The second question we got was around um, the most important success measurements of a PIM. So uh, I want you to think back a few years, a few decades even, to the history of PIM. And PIM systems looked a lot like product MDM systems in that they were primarily data management systems. It was much more driven by IT, a lot less about marketing, a lot less about content, and more, more about the, the product fields and data and uh, spreadsheets, really. And the success metrics for PIMs, uh, because of this heritage, was much more around IT-based uh, metrics and fields and data management. So some of the old metrics that were used were around, what's the number of products in my PIM? What's the level of completeness of fields or attributes um, in my PIM? Um, what percent of product fields were filled in general? And that sort of thing. It was, it was very easy to quantify. It was, much, it was mostly about completeness. It was about uh, just overall number of products and how they align to the ERP largely. Some of the new metrics that we've been seeing more and more in the PIM space um, and e-commerce in general is tying that product information to conversion. So uh, how is my product information impacting conversion? When I improve and cleanse and enrich my product information, is that also improving my conversion? Am I have, seeing an uptick in sales as a result? What, what are the number of upstream and downstream channels that my product information is feeding into? So quantifying that, showing it, in the dashboard and, and uh, throughout the, the application, it's really important. And just showing the readiness on those 
channels, and that's often tied to syndication. Another metric we're seeing more and more is using the PIM to reduce the number of returns. So if I think we've all had experiences where we're shopping online and the product information is quite bad, it's out of date. And uh, for instance, you get a product and it's a lot smaller or a lot bigger than you anticipated. Sometimes the di dimensions on the product were actually just incorrect in general. So one metric that's being used more and more is tracking the product inform the, the PIM system to reduce returns, seeing fewer returns once you implement and use a PIM system. Another one is uh, kind of tied to digital shelf analytics. Um, how is my PIM impacting our Amazon rankings or our sales on Walmart or on a downstream channel we're selling across? So tying the PIM to our rankings on some of our uh, downstream channels. Uh, a final one I would call out is SEO, search engine optimization. How is my PIM system impacting our, our, our relevance on search engines like Google, Bing, anything like that? Is the PIM system adapting our content and our uh, information for those search engines? And are we moving up the pay, uh, moving up the ranking, search rankings as a result? So these are all some of the measurements I'm seeing more and more in PIM. And really the idea is around uh, not just focused around the product data itself, but conversions and sales and uh, just, uh, impact on the business as a whole. Third question we got is around um, whether PIM systems are important for workflow management and cl collaboration. So this is an interesting question because it's a bit circular in that one, PIM systems can provide organizations with great benefits in terms of automating workflows and business processes um, and improving collaboration by uh, providing a single source of truth for all these things. But at the same time, uh, workflow management and collaboration are actually essential for the PIM itself. So those are actually features that need to be in the PIM if you want to be successful. To highlight this, I've had um, it, in those 80 conversations, 80 plus conversations I've had this year with online merchants, um, I've had many discussions about how on, uh, those online merchants were relying on their ERP system and spreadsheets to manage product information. They didn't have a PIM in place. And in essence, this meant that they had a database, the ERP, to store the product data and they were often using spreadsheets to model on top of it, to make bulk edits to product information, to, to uh, just make changes in general before uploading it back into the ERP. And this clearly is not a uh, bulletproof system. There's a lot of, it's very easy to make errors. It's very hard to collaborate on spreadsheets. So in these cases, uh, it, it's just, Without a single source of truth, using spreadsheets, it's really hard to collaborate. It's really hard to set up. It's almost impossible to set up workflows on Excel. So a PIM system, bringing a PIM system in really helps solve this. It helps companies automate what happens when a product is found to have errors, what happens when new products are added. Building in workflows really streamlines this. And when you're working with tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or even millions of products in your catalog, um, it just becomes unmanageable in spreadsheets. And that's when a PIM is extremely um, important and helpful for solving this. Finally, uh, I, I do want to mention that having more people using the PIM system can drive real benefits for the organization. So in the past, what I, I talked a little bit about the, the history of PIM and MDM. Traditionally, PIM systems were managed by a few people. There weren't all that many users. There were kind of some power users, often in IT or aligned to IT, who maintained product information. They were really the only people who knew the PIM systems in, inside and out. And there weren't that many people. It was maybe a handful of people. It was a dozen. Um, and that didn't really, uh, didn't really enable collaboration all that much. Uh, we're seeing more and more that companies are having 
uh, dozens, hundreds of users leverage the PIM across a whole bunch of different uh, roles and functions. So for example, including merchandisers, category managers, marketers, people in sales, customer service. So having all these different users use the PIM so they understand the products, they know, for instance, in a customer service situation where you're on a phone with a customer, you can pull up information about um, a product, about a category and answer those questions. So, so the, the summary being that um, this collaboration portion is very important with PIM systems and more important than in the past. The fourth question we got is, what is the role of artificial intelligence or AI and machine learning or ML in the future of PIM? So uh, these are definitely buzzwords in PIM and essentially every software area right now, artificial intelligence. And honestly, when I talk to online merchants who are using PIMs, AI and ML are not really delivering that much value right now. Um, they're kind of on radars of merchants, but they're not really delivering that much value right now. And one of the questions I asked in those 80 interviews I've conducted this year is how would you rate your PIM vendor um, in terms of AI? What, what value is it bringing and how would you rate that, their strategy? And across the board, when I ask this question, it comes out as the lowest rated category I ask about. I think that's because, again, it's not really delivering that much value right now. Um, merchants aren't seeing AI make their lives that much easier right now. With that said, I do think um, AI and ML will have a big impact, important role in PIM in the future. And some of the areas I think they will provide value in are in areas such as uh, data quality ratings, in addition to uh, data completion. So data quality is another level higher about how good is this product information, content augmentation. So actually adjusting content, zooming in, zooming out, changing the content based on individual channels, content tagging. We see this quite often with uh, using, for, ins for instance, Google and Amazon using some of their AI to actually auto tag products when uploaded, content when uploaded into the system. Um, and even making associations between products and attributes. So across the catalog, making associations and uh, making it easier to cross-sell and upsell products, uh, which the system can do automatically. So those are some of the areas we do think we're going to see more AI um, in, in PIM systems. We got a question about, the, the next one's about how should companies gather channel behavioral data and digital shelf analytics nowadays? And this is a really challenging one. I don't have a great answer here. Um, every retailer and brand selling online uh, will have to kind of figure it out on their own, to be honest. There's no one size fits all solution out there. It really depends on your industry and sub industry even and it in your category. And it also depends on the channels you're selling to. So am I selling on Amazon, Walmart, Alibaba, Mercado Libre? Etc., um, because it's really hard to gather data uh, for all these different channels. And you're going to have to, based on where your, um, where your sales happen, whether they happen on Amazon or your own branded site, you're going to need to align yourself with a solution provider specifically for that channel, I would say. Um, it, it, and it, again, it's very hard to do that yourself. I don't know. I'd recommend companies try to track their competitors' prices, for instance, on other channels. Um, if you search digital shelf analytics as a search term, you'll find a lot of information out there about kind of how to go about this. One, uh, to call out some of the few things that I think um, this category does help with are uh, tr providing analytics and tracking changes in demand and pricing, um, tracking inventory of yourself and your competitors, um, Search and searching optimization, optimizing content. These are all areas where digital shelf analytics um, are becoming more and more important. And then the final question we got was around uh, digital asset management or DAM systems 
and how whether it's a recommended integration with PIMS. And the, the simple answer here is yes. Um, that's the answer. But to go a little bit deeper, and I want to start by saying um, DAMS, digital asset management, is a term we use, I use, and we use often in the United States. I have run across uh, media asset management or MAMS also used. So for the purposes of this conversation, I'm talking about the same thing. Um, but again, the answer is yes. And I want you to think about the role of a PIM in today's digital commerce is to improve conversion rates, to show off your product and make sales and making sure that your content and your product information is optimal. And as a result, having good content and having a strong dam um, enables online merchants to manage and deliver content that helps customers understand your products and press the buy button more likely. Um, specifically, some areas where a dam will benefit online merchants is with things like auto cropping of content for specific form factors like on mobile, support for a wider range of content types like CAD files, vector graphics, 360 spin, supporting brand guidelines or style sheets, providing access to external content repositories, sometimes called content as a service. These are all things that typically it's hard to get all of these things in a PIM out of the box. So uh, I talk to retailers and brands all the time who build this integration with a dam because they want some of these things. Um, and the list goes on as well. And additionally, I would just want to, I just want to call out a few other important integrations I see uh, from PIMS. And those include with the ERP, digital commerce platforms, product lifecycle management systems, as well as personalization systems. These are all uh, quite important to integrate with a PIM. Um, so that's uh, my answers to your questions. I really appreciate you sending them over. And I hope uh, this talk was a little bit helpful as you go through your PIM and digital transformation journeys. Thank you.